check out this new loading screen. Man, it is a good time to be playing Brawl. We're gonna cover all of the new cosmetics, including skins, pins, sprays, I think that's everything, as well as details on the gear price reduction, the new game mode, second gears for Buzz and Griff, and a bunch of other stuff coming in this update, starting with balance changes. Buzz is getting a 5% buff to his health from 6,300 HP to 6,600 HP at max level. This is a decent buff that should help him stay alive a bit better. He'll be able to survive one additional ammo from 11 of the 60 brawlers in the game. I don't think that's going to make Buzz too strong, but he'll certainly be more viable. Poco is getting a 14% damage buff to his main attack. At max level, it's going from 1,050 to 1,200 damage. Now, I know that Poco doesn't deal a lot of damage in the first place, but that is a huge buff to his attack damage. He'll be able to take out 39 of the 60 brawlers in the game with one less ammo, which is going to make Poco much stronger. Honestly, I could see this making Poco the go-to healer after this update, unless Gus is even stronger. Nita is getting a 9% buff to her main attack damage. It's going from 1,320 to 1,440 damage at max level. That's not as big of a buff as Poco's buff, but that's still a massive damage buff for Nita. She's going to be able to take out 21 of the 60 brawlers with one less ammo, and that is a big change. On top of that, her supercharge rate is getting a buff as well. Instead of needing six hits to charge, it will now charge in only five hits, which means she'll have a super charge up 17% easier. Both of these are fairly large changes, and I could see Nita absolutely dominating the meta after this update. Lola is getting a massive buff to her stunt double gadget. The amount of HP that she and her ego will heal when they swap places is increasing from 350 to 1000 HP. I'm not convinced this is going to make it the better gadget over her freeze frame gadget, but the choice between the two should be much more difficult to make now. Jackie is getting a 7% buff to her main attack damage. At max level, it's going from 1740 to 1860 damage with each attack. This will make it so she can take out 17 of the 60 brawlers in the game with one less ammo. But more importantly, she'll now be able to three shot brawlers around the 5400 HP mark. This includes Bo, Ems, Gale, Jean, and Squeak. And this is a sizable buff that will make her stronger, but probably not OP. Meg is getting a buff to her supercharge rate. Instead of requiring eight hits to fully charge her mecha, she'll now require seven. Back in January, it was increased from six hits to eight, and that change brought Meg from the top of the meta all the way to the bottom, so I think we'll find her in a pretty good place after this update. Penny is getting a 5% nerf to her health, which is a decent nerf. At max level, she's going from 5,700 to 5,400 HP, and she'll now survive one less ammo from 14 of the six brawlers in the game, which is going to have a bit of an impact on her. I think she'll still be strong, but she'll probably be closer to the average side of the meta. Carl is getting a 9% nerf to his health from 6,600 HP to 6,000 HP flat at max level. This is a pretty sizable nerf, which means that he'll survive one less ammo from 22 of the 60 brawlers in the game. I think Carl is still going to be a very strong option, but probably not the powerhouse that he has been, since it'll be a little bit easier to take him out. Crow is getting a big nerf to his slowing toxin gadget. The slow duration is decreasing from five seconds down to three seconds. Now, Crow has been near the top of the competitive meta for a long time, almost entirely because of this gadget alone. The slow is just, it's just too long. I think he's gonna be much less competitive now, but hopefully that means that Supercell will be able to give him some buffs to make him good without having to rely on his gadget. Bonnie's getting an 8% nerf to her health while in her cannon form. At max level, it's going from 7,800 HP to 7,200 HP, and that is a pretty big chunk of health that will make it a bit easier to take her out, especially for the 16 of the 60 brawlers that will now require one less ammo to take her out. But Janet, the queen of the last meta, is getting two nerfs. First is a 6% nerf to her health, and at max level, it's decreasing from 5,400 HP to 5,100 HP. Seven of the 60 brawlers will require one less ammo to take her out, so it's not a huge change by itself, but she is getting a nerf to her supercharge rate, so now she'll require six hits to charge her super instead of just five. This is going to make it 20% harder to charge up her super, which means that she will be grounded a lot more. These two changes definitely will tone her down, but I still think she's going to be a fairly competitive option, just not in every mode like she was before. Griff is getting a new second gadget. His new coin shower gadget will add an additional row of three coins to his next attack. This is a 33% buff to the potential damage that he will be able to deal with just one attack. And personally, I don't think this gadget is quite as good as his first gadget, but it will come in handy in some situations. Buzz is also getting a new second gadget. His new X-ray shades 
Buzz gadget will allow Buzz to see into bushes in his supercharge area for 12 seconds. This should pair very nicely with his Eyes Sharp Star Power, which increases his charging area. I really like this gadget a lot because if Buzz is walking around in the bush and he notices that he starts charging his super a little bit, he can just pop this gadget and immediately know where the enemies are. And this is a great addition to Buzz's kit. We're getting an exciting new game mode called Last Stand. The goal is to protect 8-bit against evil robots until the time runs out. He will fight alongside with you, but he only has 12,000 HP and you cannot heal him with normal abilities like Pam or Poco. But there are five coins lying around the map and picking them up will fully heal 8-bit as long as he's not dead. He'll also put down a super when you pick up a coin as well. After a short period of time, 8-bit will start to count down in the upper left corner of the screen. It's kind of small, but you'll be able to see it. If it reaches zero, he will power down and stop fighting with you. Picking up a coin will revive him, but it might not always be the best strategy to do because, well, 8-bit kind of has a mind of his own and sometimes we notice that he will just run straight into the big boss and it's it's kind of annoying. I played up through Insane 4 with OJ and Lex and it gets hard. At first, we went with two DPS brawlers and one runner who would just pick up the coins to restore 8-bit's health. That worked actually really well until we bit, beat Insane 1. We tried a bunch of strategies to try and beat Insane 2 and eventually we did find some sort of like a, a cheese strategy, if you will, that did work while recording Lex's video. I recommend watching OJ's and Lex's video to see exactly what happened. I'm not going to spoil it. Overall, though, I really enjoyed this game mode a lot, and I am looking forward to seeing what kinds of strategies people come up with. We've got a ton of awesome skins, pins, and other cosmetics to cover, but first, let's cover some other stuff coming in this update. Gear costs are getting cut in this update, okay? Crafting a level 1 gear is going from 80 scrap down to 40 scrap, and will still cost one gear token. Crafting a level 2 gear is going from 200 scrap to 100 scrap and will cost one gear token instead of two. And crafting a level 3 is going from 400 scrap down to 200 and will only cost two gear tokens instead of four. So in total, maxing out a gear will require exactly half the amount of scrap as before and almost half the amount of gear tokens. This, guys, this is such a huge improvement to the game's economy, in my opinion. It's, it's so great. I love it. And one thing that is important to realize is that you won't get any refunds for any of the gears that you have crafted in the past, at least not in this update. However, Brawl Stars is planning on completely reworking gears in the October update, and you will get refunded for all of the scrap and the gear tokens that you have ever collected once the update lands. They're doing the refund based off of what you have collected, not what you have crafted, so it doesn't actually matter whether you craft stuff. So even though we'll have to wait a couple of months, everybody's gears will be completely refunded very fairly in the future. We just don't have exact details on how this will work, but from the sounds of it, they're converting scrap and gear tokens into coins, and all future gears will probably just be bought with coins. They're also planning on adding new gears that are only usable on certain brawlers, which is so awesome. If you guys want to see me do a video where I dive into the details more, as well as provide my ideas on how I think they will do this, let me know in the comment section below and I will consider it. Okay, this is the saddest part of this update. Siege is getting completely removed from Brawl Stars. We'll no longer be able to play it in friendly rooms. <laughs> The Trophy League cycle is doubling from four weeks to eight weeks long, and it will match the length of the Brawl Pass seasons. Now, to be very clear, this is just an experiment for right now. That means that if this doesn't go well, Brawl Stars will revert it, or they'll completely rechange it or something. We don't know exactly, but they want to gather data and see how this will actually impact things. So they are planning on running additional Star Point quests and challenges throughout the season to try and compensate for the potential loss in Star Points. We don't know exactly how many star points we'll be getting or if we'll be getting less or what, but I imagine that lower trophy players that are actively playing and will complete those quests and challenges will benefit from this. And if I had to guess, players with a lot of um, trophies will probably not get as many star points this season. This is just a guess, but we'll see how this will impact things. Either way, this is going to be a very exciting time for you to push your brawlers to higher trophies than you ever have. Reach those new ranks because now is the time to do it. We're now going to be able to 
swap brawlers in Power League at the end of the pick ban phase. This will only work for if you have the brawler that you actually currently own, and you'll also have to use your brawlers at your power level, gadgets, star powers, gears, and all of that for the brawler. You can't let somebody else unlock a brawler and you have it at power one and then swap with them. It doesn't work that way. Now let's cover all of the cosmetics. Desperado Poco is going to be the tier one reward of the Brawl Pass, and if I'm being honest, I think this is the first skin that I actually really like. I did like Trash Poco, but this one, it's just so much better. His musical notes are galloping horses for his attack, and his super looks even cooler. Now he loses control of his galloping guitar when he loses, and he rocks out after prancing about on his guitar, horse, whatever, when he wins. Caesar Sam is going to be the tier 70 skin, and I can't show you his animations until the Sam Olympics, so subscribe for that. Lawless Lola is going to be the Power League skin, and from now on, Power League skins will also be themed after the current Brawl Pass season. For her attacks, she fires this cool, like, fox-looking projectiles, and she throws out her hat when she uses her super. She also gets really angry when she loses, and then seeks comfort from her little fox weapon thing. Uh, why do you just she attack with a fox? I don't understand. When she wins, she does this cool little spin with her fox, and it's, uh, it's cool. This is a cool skin. Moon Bunny Squeak is going to release on September 7th, and will only cost 49 gems. For his attack, he shoots globs of sticky moon bunny stuff. <laughs> and for his super, he throws out a moon bunny blom that also explodes into more moon bunny goop. I don't understand. When he loses, he tries to destroy a piece of the moon and accidentally knocks himself out. And when he wins, he successfully throws it around and it's all cool because bunny squeak is cool. And it's only 49 gems, pretty sweet skin. Also 49 gems is Song's Pam, who will release on September 9th. And this skin, oh my gosh. 49 gems, are you kidding me? Take my money, Supercell. Her projectiles are the, some of the coolest in the game. A bunch of green arrows that are bouncing all over the place. And for her super, she throws out a briefcase of money that random arrows pop up, like, you know, the, the positive the stock market tickers with dollar signs around it. It's really cool. When she loses, she panics after she realizes that somehow she lost all of the money from her briefcase. And she fires a bunch of money into the air and catches it with her briefcase when she wins. This skin is such an insane deal super hilarious. Crow Bone is going to release on September 16th and will cost 149 gems. This skin, oh my gosh, it's so cool. Not only do his attacks have a really cool green glow to them, but his super, oh my gosh, it's so awesome. These cool crows like fly out in every direction and it's just so good looking. You know, he gets really disappointed and then pouts when he loses. And when he wins, he shows off this really cool dagger attack in the air. And I don't know if he actually cut anything up, but it looks cool. Mecha Mortis is going to release on October 7th and will cost 299 gems. If you buy him within the first month of his release, you will get nine animated pins, a profile picture, which looks super dope, and a spray as well. Now, after you buy him, you will then have the option of also purchasing Light Mecha Mortis and Dark Mecha Mortis as well, each for 49 gems, which honestly, I think that is such a great idea. It's so much better than having to spend 300 gems for each of them if you want all three. His attacks look so cool with his giant blade and this really cool effects that come out of it. It's just awesome. And for a super, he sends out this really cool energy orb thing in place of bats. Now, when he loses, he uses a ninja replacement technique to switch places with a log. And when he wins, he ninja slices that same log into a bunch of pieces in one quick attack. This skin, oh, 300 gems is a lot, but in my opinion, that's worth it. Just remember to use Kokaris in the Brawl Stars shop whenever you purchase some gems or any creator code. I just hear that Code Kairos is the most juicy. Trick or Treat Leon is going to release on October 24th and will cost 49 gems. As you can see from him shaking his bucket, he really wants her candy. Now, I'm not 100% sure what he throws out for his attack, but it might be trick or treat baskets or something like that. And a little spooky ghost appears whenever he goes invisible. When he loses, he gets so upset that he tosses his basket of candy, which I feel like no kid should ever do. And he does a little spooky walk and then jump scares you when he wins. We're getting a ton of new pins coming to the game this update. We're gonna get some cool Brawloween pins as well as some esports pins. Make sure you guys uh, get that Team Tribe one. Shout out to the, my team. And on top of that, we're getting some new 
new pins for specific skins, including three new pins for Mecha Bow and Mecha Crow as well. On top of that, 10 brawlers are getting some special pins on top of the ones that are already in the game. We're also getting a bunch of new sprays. 10 brawlers are getting their very own spray. Two sprays will come in this specific brawl pass, and then we'll have three game mode specific sprays that will be awarded for beating challenges. And on top of that, there is the BCS spray as well, the Brawl Stars Championship. We also have a bunch of really awesome profile icons coming to the game. I especially like the robot who is clearly trying to take Colt's place. And that is everything I'm allowed to share with you in this update sneak peek. Make sure you guys subscribe for the Sam Olympics and the Gus Olympics sneak peek, and check out my other channels, including my Free Fire channel right here. I've also got this really awesome video right here where I go into the Brawl Stars' past and I uncover how the meta evolved during Brawl Stars beta. You've got to watch it. For now, this is Kairos. I'm ticking by and we will see you in Brawl Stars.